We have some breaking news that just dropped regarding Arelvis Martinez as he has officially been called up to make his major league debut. He is the Jays' number two prospect, and this is a bit of a surprising decision that not many Jays fans were expecting as there was a bit of an unfortunate subsequent move that happened in order for Arelvis to be able to be called up. So to break all that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, everybody? Nick Goss here, host of Jays Digest. We have a lot to go over today. We talked to you earlier on in the day with the video, but... Some breaking news just dropped regarding Arelvis Martinez. He is probably going to make his Major League debut either tonight or tomorrow. And what a day to be a Jays fan. At least what a moment to be a Jays fan. We're coming off a brutal loss against the Boston Red Sox. That's no surprise. But we got some positive news. Jays fans have been clamoring for this. Jamie Campbell, all the reporters, the announcers, Buck Martinez has been clamoring for this. Joe Siddle has been clamoring for this. And it finally happened. Arelvis Martinez is coming up to the big league club the blue jays are calling up their number two ranked prospect of relvis martinez the team announced and the relvis martinez is i think the 56th ranked prospect in baseball according to baseball america so he is up and i don't know what position he's gonna play but we're gonna find that out very very soon but yeah before we get into it quick reminder to hit that subscribe button we're on the road to 13,000 subscribers and each one of you who hit the subscribe button it means the world to peter and myself so thank you but let's dive right into it so relvis martinez is a guy that Coming into this season, he started off really solid. He was hitting tons of home runs. He went on that very big stretch where he was crushing over the past you know month or so, where he was crushing home runs nonstop, just absolutely killing it. He obviously started off a little cold and then started to get going. And then he kind of started to tail off a little bit. But this guy can hit. And if you're unfamiliar with the Robles Martinez, he is an infielder. He's played a little bit of outfield. We saw him play second base a lot more lately and primarily. And now he might slide in. But now, to the second base spot, but now we also have Spencer Horowitz at second base, so that's why I'm saying the position where Relvis Martinez is going to play is up in the air and going to be very, very interesting. I'm thinking he might end up playing uh, maybe some third, maybe even some uh, DH a lot as well, and this guy can hit, and I'm, if you can't tell, I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this forever. We've been waiting for it on the channel. Peter and myself have been talking a lot about just getting more offense in there and uh, they did that. And Arelvis' loudest tool is his power, which has allowed him to hit with the slash line of 260 average, 343 on base with a 523 slugging. That is approaching a 900 OPS. And defensively, you can see this here, he has started 36 games at second base, 15 at third base. Expect IKF and perhaps Clement to handle shortstop for the Jays with Bichette sidelined. And that means that, of course, Bichette is, uh, Bichette is out. Bichette has gone to the 10-day injured list right now. So in the meantime, I suspect some lineup with IKF at short, Arelvis at third, Horwitz at second, Vladdy at first, and then whoever you want at DH, whoever's hitting really well, whether that's Clement, whether that's Danny Jansen, wh whoever that is, depending on the day. And Arelvis will be times where IKF is playing third, Ernie's playing short, and you have uh, Arelvis Martinez as a DH as well. There's going to be lots of times for that. But again, his loudest tool is power, and boy, has he showed it. And you can look at this. This is from EJ Nave. I just want to put this in here because... This is a lineup that is uh, that could be really good and really could carry the Jays to hopefully getting back to 500. So shout out to EJ for this one. Second base, Spencer Horwitz. Left field, Davis Schneider. Catcher, Danny Jansen. Then you have Vladdy, Dalton, Arelvis, Berger, Turner, and Clement, and Connor Falefa. Like This looks a lot better than what it did a couple of weeks ago. This is looking very, very good. You have Spencer Horwitz, who's been crushing it. You have Davis Schneider, who's been Davis Schneider the whole year. Really, really good. Danny Jansen, who's been crushing it. And then you're now looking at your weak spot in the lineup being Justin Turner and things like that. So this is a lineup that I am all for. And this is kind of the thing. You have Berger now who's called up. They put their cards on the table with him. They put the cards on the table with Spencer Horwitz. Now their three best hitting prospects are up. You have Berger, you have Horwitz, and you have um, Arelvis Martinez. This, they're going all in here. And it started off in the season with, okay, yeah, this is going to be maybe these guys, a couple of these guys get a chance in September later on. We're going to go with the veterans. It's no longer the veterans anymore. And yeah, Bo Bichette was on the 10-day injured list. They could have called up a different prospect. There's a lot of different guys that could have got called up. Maybe even like Alan Roden. But they went with the big guns, which is Arelvis Martinez, who has 16 home runs. And you can look at his stats here now. So across 63 games this year, he has a 867 OPS, approaching 900 with 16 home runs. So... Arelvis has been on fire. He really has been. He's 22 years old. He's still young. He's a top 100 prospect in baseball. We thought maybe they, they were going to use him for a trade chip, and they're just going to use him right now. And I think they're going to give him very consistent playing time, very similar to what we've seen with Spencer Horitz and all these other guys. 
against lefties he'll play against righties i suspect a relvis to play they're gonna get the best look and this is a good excuse for them to get a look because of relvis martinez or because boba Chet, sorry is on the injured list this is the best time for them to get a look on to see what Arelvis can do in a short sample size. And if he does relatively well at all, I would not be surprised if they keep him up and then maybe DFA someone else. Maybe Clement ends up getting the short end of the stick if Arelvis plays well, because then you have Bo at short, and then you have, of course, IKF and all those guys who they're not going to get rid of. Or maybe Justin Turner gets let go, but I'm not going to speak too far in advance because he does have to perform. And I, I really think this guy has what it takes. Yes, he's kind of a, a hit or miss guy. He's either going to strike out. He's going to hit his home runs. He's not going to take many walks. He's going to strike out a lot. His contact's okay. And his defense is really not the best. It has been okay at second base, better than third base, but he's probably going to get a lot of his run at third base, which has been a position now that the Jays have tons of. So they're really trading offense for defense here. And if you rewind back to 2022, Vladdy spoke about Arelvis Martinez at spring training, and he had to say this, quote, Arelvis is like my little brother. We talk about baseball and life. I'm excited to see him keep getting better. And guess what, Vladdy? Now is the time where they can now reunite and see what actually happens. So this is going to be super exciting. As of the time of recording, I'm not entirely sure if Arelvis is debuting tonight. If not, he's going to be debuting most likely tomorrow. Again, only a 10-day IL stint for uh, Bo Bichette, who is just dealing with some soreness, so he should be okay. But this gives them an opportunity to try Arelvis Martinez and to give Bo some rest, a bit of a mental reset. who's had a really rough season. And some other subsequent moves to go over as well. Eisert is sent down. Brandon Eisert is sent down. Ryan Burr has been called up. So you have Burr back, who they got a couple weeks ago, who looked okay in his one appearance. You have Arelvis Martinez. So Burr and Arelvis Martinez are up. Eisert, who had a very good major league debut yesterday in two innings to score this ball was sent down so it's good news obviously the jays loss yesterday was very bad news but i don't know seeing our number two prospect and then finally going i guess all into a degree even though their excuse is that boba shed is injured you get to see a look at this guy kind of like what we saw with addison berger earlier on in the year where there was an injury berger got called up and then boom he went like one for 18, but now they call him up again and he's really starting to look like a good hitter. If Berger, Horwitz, and Arelvis can start to swing the bat even remotely as good as they did in AAA, this lineup could be very lethal and have a lot less holes, especially with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. starting to pick it up, with Elton Verso starting to pick it up. If you slide Bo Bichette in that nine hole instead of those two and Bo Bichette starts to go back to the Bo Bichette that he's been in his entire career, then this lineup is looking pretty potent. Obviously, it's a lot of what ifs. It is. But I'm having faith right now in this moment that Arelvis is going to be able to perform and get the offense going. The pitching has been okay. We saw they signed this guy maybe, uh, Caprician, earlier on in the day. So you can check out our video on that uh, if you want to check it out again from earlier today. Caprician, he's going to be an interesting starter. But Boba Shett is the focus of... Uh, of the attention now, aside from, of course, I mean, Arelvis Martinez is the focus of attention, but hoping that Bobachet's injury isn't serious going forward is pretty important to the team. Like, that's kind of what's getting lost in this, is making sure Bo is okay. It seems like some soreness, so he should be good. But if we can get him back and get him rolling, and then Arelvis stays up, they'd obviously have to make a subsequent move with someone else. This lineup could be looking good. But that'll wrap it up. Hopefully, Jason can get a win in a few hours here. Let us know down in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this move. And if you want to check out a video from yesterday or from earlier today, click on your screen right now. It's a very interesting one. We'll see you soon.